Hello, how's it going? Hello, it's going. That's good. I'm fine. Excellent. Mel Melvy, is it? Yeah, Melvy. Melvy, cool. And Abigail. Hi, Abigail. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, 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 good. So, we got a few minutes. Hopefully, a few more friends will join us here. Did my other class, and not too many were there, but that's okay, I guess. How is quarantine treating everyone? It's pretty slow. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Oh, not bad, not bad. Uh, I know when I left, what was it, March? Yeah, March, wow. <laughs> left March, I was like, oh, I'll be back in a few weeks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, that was not not how it was about to happen so anyway um did you folks get a chance to check out the syllabus and schedule at all um i looked at the syllabus real quick but i didn't look at like a whole lot okay cool cool we'll go over kind of all those good gory details today so okay yeah, yeah i wasn't sure what to look at and like what to wait for so i just kind of like fair yeah. enough fair enough fair enough So do you have any in-person classes or are you completely online? No, I am completely online this semester. And part of that is because I am pretty convinced that it's just going to open up and shut right back down again. You know, I think Look, so. We got, what, 36, <laughs> 36 states now are reporting outbreaks at colleges and universities. So yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm imagining that uh, the same is going to be with us. So <laughs> I think <laughs> MSU already started shutting down again. So Did that. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Right. Hi, Anna. Hi, Ella. How's it going? Hi. Good. Hey. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Just a couple more minutes. We'll let people get here. But yeah, no, I've, I figured might as well start the class and end the class in the same way. So we're all online. So. And this one doesn't have a lab. My other class has a lab. That's going to be fun. One more yeah. yeah. <laughs> As I spent a lot of time this summer making online labs, so we'll be good. We'll be good. <laughs> so everybody is staying safe though, right? No no outbreaks, right? Nothing. Right. Yeah. Ben, you look like a not a very safe place there to be videoing from. <laughs> All right, don't crash. <laughs> All right, one more moment and we'll get started. Did anybody have any questions at the start here? How are you guys doing? Great, Ben, how's it going? Good. Don't crash. I'm in the bookstore. Sorry, I'm in the car, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, good news is you don't need any books for this class. Yeah. Well, on there all online or whatever you want. So it's two o'clock. We'll go ahead and just kind of start off here. And what I wanted to do is just kind of start off. Well, we'll start off with just kind of the, uh, the introduction here. And I got to go share the screen. On here. Everybody see my PowerPoint here? Yep. Perfect. All right, this is Environmental Geoscience uh, GL106. We are totally online for this class, in case you haven't figured that out yet. There is me, your fearless leader, John Van Regenmorter. You can just call me John or Professor or whatever's comfortable and pretty... Uh, 
pretty laid back as far as that goes. A bit about me, got my uh, uh, undergrad at a little place called Grand Valley State University right down the street from us here. Uh, and then I got a kind of collection of master's degrees from Western and, and CU Boulder in geology and GIS, which is the stuff that runs Google Earth and Google Maps and that kind of stuff, and biological anthropology. A um, little bit about me, I love everything about geology. I've been doing it from a very young age. Actually, this is a picture of my son, one years old, finding his first dinosaur. I knew where one was and just went and sat him there. But uh, uh, I've been doing this basically since high school. And, you know, as we'll find out going throughout this class, we've all had bad ideas in the past, right? So, you know, there's mine. <laughs> all right. What I do, uh, I do high resolution spatial temporal correlations. You don't really need to know what any of that is. But basically, I take fossil localities, I line them up in space and time. So all of these little dots down here, Tanya's turtle, Aaron's anthills, these are all places where fossils have been recovered. And my job is to walk up and down and up and down and up and down and find these little marker beds, which are all lined up here. We're great for correlation, for, for telling us what's higher and what's lower. Uh, and then we can put them all into a nice big stratigraphic section like this and we know which ones are lower and which ones are higher so which ones are, are younger and which ones are older right uh and then we can look at how things change over time on a much finer resolution than we have been in the past right? um i do love fossils mostly i deal with mammal fossils especially primates like this guy over here a little primate called smilodectes uh, but i love anything with sabers sabers are just awesome uh, although uh, I will say that all fossils are, are amazing. All right. One of the other things I've done is a lot of studying of fish poop here in the Grand Rapids in the gypsum mines, some of the crappiest research I've ever done. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I love cheesy jokes, by the way, too. Let me get that. So, <laughs> um, other things I'm into, archaeology, human and primate evolution, GIS, uh, data dissemination. Uh, minerals, I love minerals. Uh, and then mass extinctions, looking at mass extinctions and how they affect evolution is another one of my, my interests, All right? So who here is this, anybody's first semester in college? You got a first semester, okay. All right. Um, my last class was full of them. So um, anyway, college is, you know, one of these experiences where education and social involvement are important you know don't be a hermit and just live in your you know your your house and study the whole time but don't do like i did and you know think it was actually you know you were there to party and we're majoring in that the first round of college so uh you know don't go too overboard in either direction right but at at this level now you have the ability to take control of your education you can sit back you can you know just kind of watch it happen to you or you can kind of you know actively become involved and, and make your education what you want it to be right uh maybe not so much right now but you know once we get a vaccine or something right you know go out meet some new people interact with diff different folks from different areas different points of view right get involved there's groups there's clubs there's activities uh, if you picked a department or a major, check into there, see if they've got any, any uh, you know, clubs or, or groups going on. Uh, take advantage of cool study abroad programs, right? Uh, these are, uh, you know, awesome uh, uh, programs where you can get, uh, you know, uh, credit to go study in a, you know, foreign country. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, get involved in research opportunities. Talk to professors, right? I've had students that uh, already worked at with, you know, different research pub, uh, projects, and they've actually been able to get professional publications out of them, trips to conferences, stuff like that. So um, this is the way you can get involved in kind of your college uh, experience, right? So for right now, we're online, right? Uh, I imagine even if you have in-person classes, pretty soon they're gonna be online. That would be my guess, right? But we're not stuck out there alone, right? We have uh, weekly discussion boards that we're gonna be doing. These are graded. You do need to participate two days per week, not two posts right at the very end of the week, right? You know, just really quickly about nothing, uh, but, you know, actively be involved and kind of be reading what others are posting and responding and that kind of good stuff. We'll go over that a little bit more uh, when we look at our, our uh, actual Blackboard page. I do have video office hours as well. Uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. If that doesn't work for you, I can always schedule another time uh, to talk, right? 
Uh, and then you can always email me. I, I try to be pretty quick at uh, getting back to you uh, responding to emails, right? Uh, I did this this summer, but pretty much I am new to this online teaching thing. So if you have great ideas, right? Or, you know, things working for you, things are not working for you, especially let me know these, right? Uh, and then ideas to improve the class. I'm open to new new ideas. If you've seen other things effectively used or have great ideas of, you know, how we may become, you know, you know, uh, more uh, involved with the class or, you know, something that would help you study or learn, whatever, please let me know, right? So just kind of a breakdown of class schedule. Obviously we are asynchronous. Uh, today we're just kind of, you know, meeting at introductory, but uh, uh, there will be no um, specific time that you have to be present. However, there are some important day, uh, times to worry about. Uh, our weekly due dates for everything is gonna be Sunday at 11.59 p.m. I will launch the weekly materials Sunday at 11.59 p.m. and they will be due the next Sunday at 11.59 p.m. The one thing that will differ from that will be the exams. I believe the exams I will launch on Wednesday. They will also be due Sunday nights. Uh, exams are open note, open book, but uh, you do have a three hour time limit on the exam. So you can pick whatever, whatever time between Wednesday and, and Sunday, but you know, make sure you set a time, a nice three hour block to, to do the exam uh, then. Right? Again, virtual office hours, Wednesdays and Thursdays, right? Uh, and we do not have a required textbook for this class. Any introductory geology textbook or, or, um, or uh, uh, environmental geology textbook will work. There's a couple that are listed in the syllabus as far as online ones. Oops, we do not need to order a rock and mineral kit. I don't know why that is there. Hold on a second here. There is no rock and mineral kit. That is for my other class, sorry. All right, there we go, that's deleted now. All right, uh, let's take a look at kind of how it breaks down. Everything's out of a thousand points. So that should make it nice and easy for you to kind of see where you are. Participation and homework, this will include uh, the weekly discussion board, which are 10 points a week. Uh, videos, not, uh, not in the orientation, but starting in chapter one, uh, the discussion video or the, the lecture videos uh, will have uh, quiz questions built into them. Uh, so they'll, you'll see uh, the videos will say required quiz embedded. Those are the ones you have to do. Um, uh, for some of the uh, chapters, especially when we get into the natural hazards, volcanoes and earthquakes and stuff, uh, I'll post a lot of videos just because they're really fun to watch um, and, and uh, informative. But if it doesn't say that required, you know, uh, quiz embedded, then, they're, then it's not graded, right? Um, but they're there for you to watch. Uh, uh, this also includes a few homework things that we'll be doing as well. Uh, midterm exams are gonna be two of them at 140 points each, and a final exam at 180 points. And then an environmental geology project, which I'll go into some detail with today. Um, but that'll be 150 points. That's due at the very end of the the semester. Goals for this class. Expand your knowledge and interest in the planet. Develop an understanding of what science is, what science is not. And then, of course, this is on, I think, every syllabus everywhere. Develop critical thinking and analytical skills, right? Fair enough. So we shall do that too. Uh, also teach um, upcoming geology majors. Uh, not many. Anybody in this class a geology major? Anybody a science major? No? Didn't think so. Actually, you're not. As you should know, you're not alone, right? So uh, part of the uh, um, orientation was to, to put a little blog post up about yourself. And uh, I would like you to kind of, you know, go through those. That is graded. Um, uh, post your own blog, but then kind of go through everybody else's. And you'll see that, you know, you're not the only one who doesn't speak science on a daily basis, right? Um, so you're not the only one in that boat, right? Um, but it is also my responsibility to recruit new geology majors. So, you know, if you feel like I'm uh, trying to talk you into becoming a geologist, I probably am, you know, <laughs> either way, right? So these are, uh, these are kind of some of the things we'll be doing. Um, let's take a look at, 
Oops, don't say, actually say it, yes. Um, let's take a look at these syllabus here for a second. So here's kind of, you know, it's the general breakdown, my contact hours, uh, office hours, that kind of good stuff, right? And then here are all the, uh, the course outcomes. Should you complete this course, you theoretically will be able to do all the following things, right? Um, and then here we go. Uh, here are the required materials, right? So no required textbooks, um, just anyone. These are some, some online resources for you, you know? If your grandpappy had a textbook, a geology textbook, you can use that too. I don't care, it's probably, probably pretty good. Most of the information uh, that you will be quizzed on and going over will be in the, the lecture material, I will say, right? But I would use these as, as good backup to the lecture material and to look look up stuff, right? Um, let's see here, attendance. You must be in attendance, right? Even though this is an online class, you still have to be participating. Don't try to do everything Sunday afternoon, right before it's due, right? It's gonna turn into not your best work, right? Um, again, here's the breakdown of our, of our uh, um, class points, right? Again, it's out of a thousand, right? It'll be out of a thousand. This is this is our, our contract right here, right? So as you're trying to figure things out uh, where you are, remember it's out of a thousand points, right? Blackboard can be a little trickly this way because it tells you how, how many points you've attempted. So maybe you see in Blackboard that you know you have 750 out of 800 points. So you think you're doing really good, but really you have 750 points out of a thousand, but you only attempted 800 points, right? So Remember, as we're going through, you're trying to reach that, that thousand is what we're aiming for. Everything's out of a thousand. Nice round number, easy to, to help you figure out what's going on, right? And then here is our environmental geology project. This is gonna be your big project for the semester. Um, so the idea is, as a well-informed, you know, active, uh, you know, member of, of our planet Earth, uh, you wanna uh, uh, help your fellow man learn about some sort of topic related to environmental geology, right? Uh, so you can pick any topic you want. You have to get it cleared by me, obviously, uh, that has something to do with environmental geology. And I'll give you a hint. Almost everything has something to do with environmental geology, right? So uh, invasive species, uh, yes, that would count, right? Uh, uh, different you know, alternative energy resources that would count, right? Uh, volcanoes, super volcanoes, um, uh, uh, waves, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, um, um, farming and agriculture, right? I mean, I've had somebody who who worked at McDonald's and did a big project on how McDonald's got their all their products and that kind of stuff, you know. So as long as you can make it, you know, tie into environmental geology. Um, it's going to, you know, it's, it's a valid project basically. So um, what you're going to be trying to create is a uh, kind of a, a, a something to put up in a, in a public space that's a standalone project. So in other words, you don't have to be there to present it. You know, it can be like a poster or a pamphlet or, you know, like a, a PowerPoint that you just have to either, you know, Somebody has to go and we you know, like push forward or whatever, you know, for the next slide. But basically you, you're, you don't have to be there to present it. You're not doing, you know, a, an oral talk or something like that, right? Uh, you can make a video. Um, I've had people uh, do all sorts of different things, um, art projects, uh, drawing projects, all sorts of fun things uh, that you can do with this. The idea is uh, whatever media you choose, uh, it does have to stand alone, so you don't have to be there to present it. Um, and it must be scholarly and informative, right? So it must provide some information to the general public, right? Um, there is a um, uh, syllabus, or I'm sorry, a um, um, rubric uh, online. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit too. Uh, but the idea here is I want you to use your interests, your talents, your skills, uh, that kind of stuff to make this project yours, like really, you know, get into it. Hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with this um, and, uh, and really, you know, enjoy this part of the project, right? Several parts to this, 
Uh, now, though, this isn't going to be for a while. This is after our first exam. The project proposal is due. This is a, you know, roughly one page uh, you know, description of what your project is, what you hope to you know, accomplish or get through to, your, to the audience, and how you plan on doing it. You're going to do a video, an interpretive dance, you know, uh, a poster, a PowerPoint presentation, a Prezi, or you're going to make a, a, a website, all sorts of different options, right? Now, in a normal face-to-face -face class, the fun part is in the last day of class, we'd all get together and we'd walk around and check out each other's projects. Obviously, that's not going to happen here. I will try to post folks' projects so everybody can kind of kind of check them out. But uh, um, this does limit us a little bit in that you have to be able to get me the project digitally, right? Um, so, you know, things like, like posters you can make in PowerPoint and stuff like that. Uh, if you do do something that is you know, a physical project, you know, as long as you can take pictures of it and get it to me and, you know, as long as you can get me the information, you know, and I can see and be able to, to accurately grade it and that kind of stuff, um, um, that will be good. So think about those when you're choosing, choosing media. Um, then there will be a project update. This is just one page. Basically, the idea here is to kind of help keep you on track. Remember, hey, this project's coming up, it's being due. Don't save it till the last minute, right? That'll be on 11.15. Uh, each of those are worth 15 points. And then the project and presentation itself, which really, there isn't a presentation, it's just, you know, you giving giving me the project and me, me going through it and checking it out, right? Um, that will be uh, worth 120 points. Uh, as you plan for this project, just know that it is my goal to give you as many points as, as possible for this project, right? So as long as you're following the rubric and, you know, it's, it's informative and scholarly, you're going to get, you know, pretty much all the points on this project, right? It's when I have to go, okay, what the heck's going on here with this project? You know, that's when I start having to deduct points. And of course, you know, that takes me a lot more time and I get grumpy and then you lose even more points and that kind of thing. <laughs> Right? Questions on any of that? We'll look a little bit more at this and I'll show you some examples of some projects in just a few. But do we have any questions on that so far? No. Everybody is good, right? Uh, here's all the nitty gritty on, you know, health, communication, participation. Here is the, <coughs> pardon me, the rubric for participation in the discussion board. Uh, again, I hope you participate two days per week uh, on the discussion board, not two posts, you know, 11.58 p.m. on Sunday night, like what is a rock, right? You know, I want you to, this is, you know, where we're online, this is one of the few ways we have to kind of get involved and interact with each other. So things that, that, that you know, uh, uh, are, are included in here, you know, your own responses to my questions, your responses to other folks' posts, your own posts, that kind of stuff, right? So 10 points, you've done all the stuff. You've, you've, you've participated with, you know, a legitimate, uh, insightful, you know, I mean, not everything has to be Einstein, right? But uh, uh, you've, you've, you know, you've participated, made a, you know, valuable contribution to the, to the discussion board at least twice, two times a week. Oh, there's his three. I'll have to change that. That's actually two. So two days a week. Um, in the discussion board, right? If you, you know, make like three or four posts, but they're all in one day, you know, I might dock you down a little bit there, right? You make one post, right? Or no posts, you're going to start losing points seriously, right? And this is, again, is each week is this, these 10 point possible participation, right? And again, I'm not going to be grading you on, you know, all you know, their punctuation was terrible and everything. I'm just looking for, you know, valuable contribution to the discussion board. Uh, and then here's all the college policies, disability supports, Title IX, all this stuff. The only thing really new here is uh, this doesn't affect us too much because we are online, but if you are doing any uh, in-person classes, make sure you take note of the, the COVID information, right? Make sure you know what you need to do to be on campus, where you need to know, you know, when you shouldn't be on campus, all that kind of good stuff. Like I said, we are all online because I'm pretty much sure it's just going to open up and shut right back down again. Anyway, so I figure start and end the same, all right? Here is our schedule. All right. 
uh, kind of the same thing each week. We have chapter, you know, you'll read the chapters, you'll have uh, video lectures, right? And those will have quiz points built into them, as noted, uh, discussion, participation, and then each week there'll be kind of a quiz as well. All right, so first week we'll be doing kind of the introductory stuff and then we'll start, we'll spend a couple of weeks on rocks and minerals and plate tectonics and then that kind of ends our first, our first section, the geology basics, which is you kind of maybe could call unit one here. Uh, and then we move into everybody's favorite unit, uh, geologic hazards or all the ways the earth can kill you dead. So we'll talk earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, streams and flooding, coastal hazards, mass wasting, right? All these sorts of fun things that just do terrible, terrible stuff to humanity, right? Um, environmental geology is all about the interaction between humans and the environment. So positive and negative, you know, how, how we, it affects us, how we affect it, all that kind of good stuff. So the second part of the class or second unit is is, is, is geologic hazards then. And then we'll move into earth resources, water resources, soil, mineral and rock resources, energy resources, pollution, and then of course ending up with everybody's favorite climate change. Right? And then you'll see noted in there Thanksgiving break, final exam date, and then uh, the other places where we have our exams as well. So basically we'll do that first unit on uh, geology basics, and then we'll do an exam, and then we'll do the second unit on um, uh, earth hazards, and then we'll do an exam. And then the final, as you noted, is is only a few points more than than the midterm. So most of that will be new material covering the uh, uh, earth resources, but there will be just a little bit of uh, you know um, of comprehensive going back to some big questions about you know big topics we talked about, the uh, plate tectonics, resources, hazards, that kind of stuff. So, any questions on any of that? If not, we'll go ahead and take a look at our Blackboard page here. So here's our Blackboard. Always will open up to announcements. I'll let you know what's going on with most things, right? Here's our uh, announcements uh, or our link to our first assignments, the orientation assignments. We go in here, we notice that I've got a little uh, introduction again. You have to watch the orientation to Blackboard videos. These, this, these ones are not graded. Uh, resume, view the syllabus and schedule. Uh, introduce yourself. This is graded, five points, right? Due by Sunday evening. Just give us a little you know, introduction to yourself. Take a look at others, you know, feel free to, to comment and, and stuff on theirs as well. And then take a note that, you know, uh, for the vast majority of us, we are not science majors, we are not geologists, right? So there is going to be a good learning curve for, for most folks in this class, right? And then take the syllabus and schedule quiz and each week we'll have kind of a little five point quiz kind of rounding out the week, right? All the materials for the week can be found in the assignments, right? So orientation that needs to be completed this week and week one as well. So here's week one, right? Read the introductory chapter in whatever book you choose. Watch the introductory ch uh, videos. Let's see if we go here. Notice that they do say nature of science required quiz embedded in video, right? Required quiz embedded in video when it says that, that means there are points there. You must watch that video and answer the question to earn the points, right? Um, again, watch the video, discuss the material, and this will take you away to our discussion board. So this week we have a couple things, introductory chapter questions, and I uh, didn't spell introductory right there, but you get the idea. Uh, and this is a spot, you have any questions on the materials you're going through, the, the video lectures or the book or the, you know, the, the lecture notes. Uh, that will be there for you to, to kind of overview uh, or to ask questions. And of course, if you've been going through this and you you know the answer to someone's question or you think you know the answer, you know, go ahead and post uh, the answer to that question as well. Uh, but we will also be doing each week, there'll be at least one uh, kind of open-ended question to start a dialogue. Uh, so this one for this week, how has science been portrayed in our society? 
Can you think of any specific examples? How might science be used or misused in our world? And you can answer and respond to kind of any part or whatever you want of these. Um, uh, things that count towards your, uh, your um, uh, participation in the discussion are, you know, posts that you make in response to things that, that I post, uh, responses to other folks' posts. However, when you respond, please use this quote button that way it'll, it'll, you know, cite who you're, who, you know, what, what thread you're responding to. That way it's not just a random one out there. Yeah, that's a great idea, George. You know, and we have no idea who George is or what you're responding to, right? So use that quote button if you're responding to a specific, a specific uh, uh, post, right? Uh, also, if something's been, uh, you, you know, you've been want, reading this book or, you know, watching the, the videos and something's just come to mind and you want to discuss it, please feel free to start your own discussion thread in here. I've made it available where you should be able to start your own discussion thread. So all of those count. Uh, again, what doesn't count is something like, what is Iraq? You know, I'm looking for, you know, you know, legitimate contribution to the, to the discussion board, right? And again, at least two days a week, right? Uh, you can post 15 times, you know, throughout the week. You can post as much as you want. It's not going to hurt you, right? But you have to do at least two days per week in the discussion board. And the reason I say two days and not two posts is because I want you to be kind of interacting and involved with it throughout the week a little bit at least. Right? So those are our assignments. Let's see. And then the last thing each week is just another little five point quiz, right? Uh, Take note that many of these quiz questions will reappear uh, in your exams. Uh, you can take these quizzes, most quizzes uh, and, and homework assignments and things that, that you have to grade or, or take or submit through here. I, uh, I will make them uh, uh, available for you to take as many times as you would like. And I'll take the highest score that you get on these. So you could take the introductory quiz here 500 times, should you please, and I will take the, you know, the highest score out of that. Um, the one thing that that will not work on, of course, is, is exams. You have one, uh, one, one chance to take the exam, right? So, um, and this will be the general setup each week. You'll have, you know, the little talk about what we're doing. Here's our, you know, what our learning goals for the week. Uh, watch the, read the chapter, watch the videos, discuss the material, take the quiz every once in a while, some fun little homework assignment, right? Um, Let's see here. I've also posted uh, lecture slides for all of the chapters for you to uh, feel free to go, uh, um, you know, to use to follow along, to take notes. I always found those very helpful rather than trying to, you know, write down quickly what everything that I'm saying, you know, just to take, you know, notes on the, uh, the PowerPoints themselves. Uh, and then we also have uh, exam reviews. You notice that uh, I've have them uh, posted already for the, the whole semester. So exam one study guide, this is over the, the, the you know, geology basics again. Um, and if we notice, and we'll open this up here, this is a five page study guide. So this is a pretty long study guide, right? Uh, but if you take a look at it, it's pretty uh, um, specific about what it's asking, right? So I could say, you know, know all about rocks, right? Or, I could be very specific on what I want you to know. Is the Earth's mantle liquid or solid? What is plate tectonics? Why is it the seminal theory, right? So if you look at these the night before the exam, you're gonna hate me, right? If you look at these while you're working on your chapter material throughout the weeks and write them down here, write the answer kind of why I double spaced it so you can write in there, right? You're gonna be much happier with yourself because again, the uh, exams are open note, open book, and what better way to reference or figure out where you need to go than, you know, have it already written down right here, right? All right, now let's take a look again at the environmental geology project, the big project for the semester. Again, we have the project rubric. Oh crap, I forgot to change the dates on there. I'll change those. Uh, uh, and then the, the breakdown of how those are gonna be kind of graded, right? Uh, so we have, uh, rubric for content, rubric for conventions and organization, and then presentation. And again, we're not going to be really doing the presentation in this class. It's going to be getting it to me, you know, on time and making sure that it is, you know, standalone and 
that it uh, it's uh, um, you know just a, a well presented project that kind of thing. Right. Um, couple updates to make on there, I guess. Here's some topic ideas. Some different ideas, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. Uh, sea level rise, coastal hazards, coal, oil, wind power, right? Geothermal, economic minerals, flooding, tsunamis, permafrost, super volcanoes. I mean, as we go through this class, kind of start, you know, be thinking about, you know, what things already interest you, right? And how you can, you know, bring those interests and make, you know, turn that into something related to environmental geology. I had some some uh, hospitality and tourism management folks who made basically uh, a trip take, a, 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 um, a cruise around the Great Lakes, stopping at all sorts of different points of interest, right? I've had a photography person do a uh, photography uh, collage of Grand Rapids and its relation to minerals and our nice artist statement with that, right? Uh, I've had lots of posters, websites, PowerPoints, Prezies, um, Prezies are always fun, um, songs, videos, all sorts of fun things. So, uh, and I did want to show you just a few of those. So here's an example of a poster that was made in PowerPoint. You can still stem, you can still see this, right, folks? Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's a poster that was made in PowerPoint, fairly simple, fairly easy, right? Um, but you know, did a, did a good job on the information on it, right? Sources listed. Uh, here's somebody who did a, a project on volcanoes in PowerPoint, right? And then sent me the PDF of it. When it was, it was in PowerPoint, it was all, you could push and it would, it would uh, you know, you'd push the next button and it would forward, you know, open one of these, these uh, text boxes. Right? So it was fairly interactive. Or, let's see here. You could do something like this, which I intend that nobody has to go this far, but uh, somebody did make this for one of my classes. I thought I needed to share it with you. Hmm. I don't know that. Everybody jealous. 
plus of me. Why? Cause I got the world's most precious supply of dihydrogen monoxide. 10% to be exact. And as a matter of fact, I'm superior. So if you're thirsty, you can have a drink unless, let's see, you're Nestle. Then you can take your case of candy and jet ski. We don't want you like a brown goby. You're worse than invasive species, so get out of here. Cause I'm coming for corporations like a glacier. So you better receive like a big ice sheet or the lower tide. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Wolverine Worldwide. Step back and we'll leave you at the Mason Quimby line. Yeah, next thing cause you stink, overwhelm you like a nipping high tide. But on the upside, we still have hope. These Michigan officials are significantly vigilant to Leslie. No, see the big picture and rotten your scope. But we're still here. And we still care. So I don't want to hear no salt. That was pretty good. No, I like that. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was over the top. Feel free to do that, but uh, you need to go nowhere near that far to get an A on this project, right? Like I said, I'm uh, you know looking to give everybody as many points as possible on this project here. Um, let's see what I've got. Um, uh, here's another fun one here. Video. There we go. Continue. All right. Bio is an owner's trash. What the heck? Okay. All right. Maybe not that one then. Go away. Stop. Okay. Okay. How about this one? Somebody did this about line five. This is another over the top one. Enbridge Energy Partners is a Canadian company that specializes in energy transportation and distribution. In July of 2010, Enbridge was responsible for the largest inland oil spill in United States history. As you can see from some video I think we have from Chopper 7 and from the ground, a huge slick, about 877,000 gallons of oil have spilled out into the creek here near the Kalamazoo River. More than a million gallons of tar sands made its way into the Kalamazoo River system. They've just declared a state of emergency here in Calhoun County. I'm told that there's very toxic chemicals in this oil. Cleanup cost was estimated at $1.2 billion. Ecologically speaking, the river system still has not recovered from this disaster. Five years of the, the worst inland oil spill in the country. There's another pipeline running through our state, and some say it's another disaster waiting to happen. Two miles west of the Mackinac Bridge resides another of Enbridge's oil transportation systems. Twin pipelines move 23 million gallons of oil a day. As if that fact alone is not frightening enough, the pipeline was built in 1953, making it nearly 65 years old. A potential spill would contaminate 15% of Lake Michigan's open water and 60% of Lake Huron. It would threaten the drinking water supply of 400,000 customers, dismantle a $30 billion tourism industry, and annual four to seven billion dollar fishery. This freshwater network is an ecological sanctuary to a unique collection of 3,500 plant and animal species and 18% of the world's surface freshwater. Enbridge's data reveals cracks, dents, and corrosion. An onshore portion has lost nearly 26% of its wall thickness. Patches of bare metal larger than dinner plates are visible in photos of protective coating gaps, much larger than the band-aid sized areas in Enbridge's original reports. Line 5 has already spilled at least 1.13 million gallons in the past 50 years in 30 other areas besides the Strait. The most well known was in 1999, where 222,600 gallons of oil spilled into Crystal Falls, Michigan. What stops an event like this from occurring in the Straits? The currents under the Straits are three times as powerful as Niagara Falls, flowing in multiple directions, causing the steel pipeline to undulate. 
Sediments once supporting the pipeline have washed away, although the company claims to have an emergency spill response plan. It was not approved by the federal government. There is no protocol for a catastrophic freshwater oil spill. And there is no acceptable way to clean up oil from underneath the thick fractured ice that layers the streets for a fifth of the year. One of Enbridge's arguments to keep Line 5 operational is that its employees may lose their jobs, 250 in all statewide, whereas one in every five Michigan jobs relies on a healthy Great Lakes ecosystem. That's 700,000. Enbridge claims that it is an essential supplier of energy to Michigan. In reality, only 5 to 10 percent of Line 5's products stays in Michigan. Many environmental lawyers believe that Enbridge is illegally operating this pipeline. Water is a public trust owned by the residents of Michigan, not by the government or any one corporation. The current administration is not addressing this issue. It is up to the citizens of Michigan to help change that. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Student made that <laughs> for this class. That's insane, right? I mean, again, you don't have to do anything like that, but I mean, if you have those skills, uh, that very much impresses me because I can, I, I can do none of that. Drawing as well, Mike. I have problems with stick figures, so you know, I'm pretty impressed by people with actual drawing talents. Um, I did have a couple more that I wanted to show you. Um, this one was from two students at CC last fall, uh, worked together, which reminds me, uh, yes, you are allowed to, to partner up and work as a group uh, uh, on this project if you would like, uh, or you can do it, and I figured most people do it, you know, individually since we're all kind of quarantined anyway. Um, but uh, this one was a water cycle wrap that two folks at uh, GRCC made last fall. Whoops. Not that. Go away. Uh, here we go. There we go. Why is it not flying? It's there we go. Water cycle. There we go. It's the water cycle. It's the kind of fancy is the hydrologic cycle. It's pretty sweet <laughs> love that all right um any questions on the, the the environmental geology projects at all uh, let me show you one that uh did not do so well this is what somebody turned into me it's supposed to be plate tectonics puzzle no information, no resources, no background, right? Don't do this. <laughs> then I got to get mad and I have to grade it, right? So this is a very, very low kind of uh, project here. 
Let's see. Oh, somebody else wrote a uh, a story basically of uh, the super volcano at Yellowstone exploding and, and featured me in it. So, you know, it's really good job there. Um, let's see. Here's another good PowerPoint about uh, uh, natural disaster or uh, about uh, floods and, and all sorts of natural disasters in uh, in um, Japan. And he did all the different types of uh, earthquake uh, building design mitigation. Mitigation is a big thing we'll be talking about in this class. All right. All right. Um, I did want to play you. The best project I have ever received, though, because I'm just so amazed by the, the talents of some of you folks out there. So, again, this is way over the top, but uh, someone made for this for me uh, last fall as well. Come on, what's going on here? Ah, oh, there we go. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> Somebody made that for this class. Holy crap, folks. Okay. Now, again, you don't need to go anywhere near that overboard, but please, if you would like to, <laughs> that is amazing stuff like that, right? Um, so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea. Um, a lot of these are posted up on Blackboard as well to, to give you ideas of projects, but, you know, again, videos, uh, um, uh, songs, um, posters, PowerPoints, prezies, um, uh, pamphlets or brochures or whatever you want to call them, uh, all that kind of good stuff, plus more, you know, art projects, all of that are, are all acceptable. So, 
Uh, anybody have questions on anything? I think it's about all I wanted to go over today. Uh, uh, to, oh, I'll sorry, Ben. <laughs> no, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Um, when do you want us to start working on these? Like the so project? it is open now. Uh, and oh, the projects you mean specifically? Yeah. So uh, they're not due till the last week of class. Okay. Uh, but there will be. So it's a ways out there yet because I want you to kind of you know get your feet wet in geology a little bit and look into some of the topics that we're going to be talking about before you kind of, pay, I mean, unless you got one already, I'm like, oh, I'm doing, uh, or landslides or whatever, you know. Um, but uh, um, just to kind of, you know, get uh, get your feet wet, get into some of the topics, start thinking about it. But the proposal is not due until the week after our first exam, which is like October 11, I want to say, somewhere in there, mid-October. Then the project update, which is just basically, you know, yeah, I'm working on it, blah, blah, blah. Keep you, just kind of keep you online, you know. Um, is That's not due till like mid-November and then uh, the project excels December. So you got a little while, but I want to introduce it now so you start thinking about it. So we start going over these topics. You're like, oh yeah, this is an interesting one. Maybe I'll work on that, you know, so. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you got, man? Uh, for the quizzes and tests, right? You said we could retake them if something happens. My phone bugged out. The when quizzes, I had not the, not the, uh, not the exams. Okay. Yeah. If if the exams, you'll have a three-hour block. Yeah. Right, and to take it, if something happens during that three-hour block and you get disconnected, then just contact me and I can get you reset up with it. But there will be only one option there because I mean, otherwise, to let you take, you know, the exam, yeah. you get a hundred percent. No, I don't think so. But yeah. uh, but the quizzes, uh, for sure, and any. Any uh, homework assignments or anything that you have to upload through Blackboard, you should be able to upload those as many times as you want and take the quizzes as many times as you want. If uh, that is not true on one of the quizzes, email me and let me know right away because I may have forgotten to push the right button. You know, it says let it take a lot, you know. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I'll try to make sure that uh, all of those are, you know, unlimited submissions basically. So, okay. Any other questions at all, folks? Well, if not, I'm gonna uh, cut this short. I will post this video uh, online. It'll be uh, a link to it uh, in the week one videos tab. But right now, uh, the orientation and week one are both due by Sunday evening. Uh, for the orientation, you got the blog post to write and then just a little five point quiz. Uh, and then for week one, it's, uh, you have the um, um, the video quizzes embedded in the video, the weekly quiz at the bottom of the, the weekly assignments, uh, and then the discussion. Right? All righty, folks. Uh, I'm around. Hit me up if you have any questions. Uh, need anything at all during this semester? I am here for you, even if it is at a distance. So. <laughs> All right, if you have any, oh, if, the other thing, if you got any issues, anything going on, right? Something comes up, you know, something like that. You catch COVID, God forbid, I had a student last semester that that happened to, right? Uh, let me know right away. Sooner is better than later if you're having an issue with something. Um, you know, I'm generally pretty lenient about, uh, you know, that when it comes to like, you know, I got in a car accident, so can I have a couple extra days to do my work? Yes, no problem, right? But just let me know ahead of time, not the last week of class, uh, can I do everything that I didn't do, right? So, okay, fair enough. All right, folks, we're looking forward to a great semester. Uh, stay safe, everybody. All right, enjoy your uh, enjoy your week. Let me know if you have any questions at all. all right. Thank you.